Martin Scarra bought his window cleaning business in spring of 21, and just one year later, he's already grown its revenue by more than 80% year over year. Today, I'll tell you how I bought Seattle Window Cleaners and rebranded it to set it up for fast growth. What's the most important tool that they can start with and they can't live without? You just have to lean into it when there's demand and just spend your marketing dollars when the customer is ready there. to buy and you're gonna get a much better ROI. Yeah, baby, look at yeah. me. What would you say would be a key system for any window company to have? But what you're looking at here is also what we call a software system. What is the most reliable strategy for attracting new customers? Customers. You don't need a whole lot of money to start a window cleaning business. Wow, okay. Martin didn't just change the company's name. He added staff, updated the technology, and implemented systems, and that hard work paid off in a big way. You guys ready to hear about how he did it? Let's go talk to Martin. Big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Well, Martin's here, and we're gonna jump right into the interview. Hey, Martin. Hello. Thanks for doing this. Nice to meet you. Likewise, tell us how you got into the window cleaning business. Did you have prior experience? Not at all. I, so what's the story on that? <laughs> I'm a Norwegian. I used to be a lawyer. I moved to the US uh, because my wife is American and uh, went to business school. And then after I graduated, decided I want to be a small business owner. And so went on a search uh, for a year and a half before I ended up buying this business. So no prior window cleaning, pressure washing experience. You've got obviously a degree in law and a business. Yeah. What led you to want to be a self-employed person? Is it just the idea of that or? So my dad had a, a small business plowing snow in Oslo in the winter and doing landscaping. That's pretty cool. And, uh, I grew up on a farm, so kind of used to the, the life that it involves, being mm -hmm. a small business owner, uh, the freedom that comes with it, etc. So yeah, just decided that I, I wanted to pursue uh -huh. the dream of small business. Where are you at revenue today? Uh, so this month we'll do a hundred K. Wow. Okay, and I'm gonna ask you about profit margins, but I want our viewers to keep watching so we can share that with them later. Okay. When you bought the business, what was it doing in terms of revenue? It was doing 500 a year. So we did 53,000 in June of, uh, yeah, last, a year ago. Got it, okay. What is the most reliable strategy for attracting new customers? So for us, it's uh, Google Ads, of course, uh, that we run, but also referrals. So I'm building out a referral program now where we're going to try and track, measure, and reward people for giving referrals. Because cool. what I realized is, yeah, we get a lot of referrals organically. So this is another thing I started doing really early is like measure everything, right? So I'm seeing where the leads come in from, and I see, oh, a lot of referrals. And those people pay in more on average, and the conversion rates are really high, so that's something that I really recommend. Have a referral program in place. Yeah, so One make of the sure key you... pillars in that referral program, can you just break it down for yes. a quick? So uh, incentivize, ask, ask for a referral, and then you gotta measure to see that they're actually coming in and figure out who gave you so that you can reward those people. How are you rewarding them? Just curious. This is counts as easy, right? Yeah. But that's also sort of impersonal yeah. and you just probably had window cleaning. That's why you refer it away. You gotta so make it like, more funner. What, what you need something be? more fun, like a little gift. Yeah, something a little something you can send in the mail. So Grab I'm looking at different, different service. Their home. Yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> like, you no, know, send them, I don't know, flower or a little box or something. There's lots of little things you can do or just a personal thank you note, yeah. handwritten stuff. It goes a long way. Yeah, you gotta just make sure you, you, you thank people when they do something for you. Referral program, guys. Mm -hmm. How many employees do you have? What do you pay them? And anything else you wanna share with us that's important? Yeah, so right now we got eight employees, seven in the field, including myself from time to time. And well, I'm double office and, and in the field a little bit right now. Mm -hmm. And then one office manager. What are you paying them and how's the structure set up? So the office manager is paid a base salary fixed and then there's a bonus every quarter depending on how we do. Uh, doing Performance. really well, so yeah. that's kind of locked in. And then the uh, technicians, they're also paid a, a base salary. Uh, well, in training, they're on fixed pay, but then once they graduate, get their own van like this and they're all out on their own. Most of our guys work just independently, one guy, one truck. Mm -hmm. And then they're paid a base salary plus a commission. So they get- Do you mind yeah. sharing what the base no, salary no. may be? Because it's uh, different per market. 
but like yeah, in the Seattle yeah. area here, what do you, what's the base? So the guys make $12 base pay and then they get 15% commission above that. Uh, on on the every job. They do. Yeah, so if they do a $100 job, they get a $15, yeah. What does that average out to, do you think, per hour, like on a, on a good scenario? No, the average right now is a little- an hour? Or? No, I don't know. The guys are making now between 35 and 40. Okay. Yeah, I had a couple of guys that uh, made over 40 now in the last few weeks. Tell us where we are, because this is a huge complex, how you got this client, just in a nutshell, so we understand what we're doing here. Yeah, so this is a big HOA. Uh, it's for a property management company that we developed a relationship with over the last year. And mm -hmm. we're here for four days now, doing oh, wow. pressure washing of all the concrete surfaces inside there. So obviously we're talking here today about window cleaning. What percentage of what you're doing here is part of your business? So this is just 7-8% of oh. our annual revenue. It's very seasonal pressure washing, typically something that gets done in spring. And then, uh, yeah, like early summer we do, window cleaning is 60% of what we do. And then uh, we, in the winter time, when the window cleaning starts getting slow, we do uh, uh, yes. gutter cleaning, roof cleaning, and Christmas lights. Okay, and I guess we'll talk about that later in the video in terms of the different services you offer and, yeah. and why that's important in terms of the seasonality of your business. What would be your advice to someone who wants to get into the window cleaning business and is thinking, okay, do I go and search for something that's that I can buy existing or start from scratch? I mean, in a nutshell, what would you tell them right now? See, you can do either. You don't need a whole lot of money to start a window cleaning business. It doesn't require a whole lot, but at the same time, if you can find one that's for sale with a steady, good recurring customer base, you mm -hmm. can also buy that relatively inexpensively. But if they have no money, that's a big deal, right? Yeah. Uh, how much did you in total invest to get started in taking over this business? Forty five thousand dollars. And we'll mention this later, but what yeah. was the business worth or what did you pay for it? So I paid around 400k for the business. But the beauty of the, uh, the, the US, you have something called uh, SBA loans, which are loans from a commercial bank guaranteed by the Small Business Administration. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they'll let you buy a business with up to 90% leverage. Wow. So it's almost like getting a mortgage, pretty much. So I, all I needed to do was post 10% down payment, mm -hmm. and then the remainder, I, I was able to borrow partially from the seller in a deferred seller note, and the mm -hmm. rest from a, a bank. If you want to start your own seven-figure cleaning business and succeed at it without trial and error, listen closely to what I'm about to share, because I'll be revealing a blueprint that you can use to start your own cleaning business today. It's a step-by-step -step blueprint that was put together by a seven-figure cleaning business owner, Chris, from Queen Bee Cleaning Services in collaboration with the Upflip team. This course covers everything you need, such as building and training your team, dominating your market with SEO and Google ads, finding Airbnb clients, setting up your website, email, logo, flyers, etc. All the systems, manuals and templates and everything you need is provided to you and a lot more. Plus, you get Chris's support. This course is your secret weapon. Make sure you secure the spot today before the price goes up by going to upflip.com forward slash cleaning dash business dash course or click the link in the description below. Besides the window cleaning, you obviously offer other services. Give us a breakdown of what else you offer. Yeah, so window cleaning is super seasonal. So we do that in the summer and then trailing into September, late August, it, it starts to quiet down quite a bit. So then we start hanging Christmas lights in October, which is uh, something we introduced last year. And it's uh, really profitable. And you're able to take the existing customer base and just right. plug into that, right? So last year we just sold to our existing customers pretty much. So Christmas lights, what other services you got so going on? The other thing we do in the winter time is gutter cleaning. When the leaves come off, everybody starts calling for that. That's also really good, uh, good profits on, but it's also something that mostly clustered around that period in November, December, early January when the leaves come off around here. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next thing we do then is uh, the uh, roof cleaning. So mm -hmm. a lot of moss grows on the shingle roofs here. So we go out and we treat that and it, it blooms in that late winter time, early spring. And so that's when we get a lot of calls for that. Pressure washing roof, gutter, window and Christmas, Christmas lights. lights that's the five things that's, so that's much it. yeah and that when, complicates things right when right. you're trying to run five different services 
So Martin, as you're doing what you need to do, uh, let's talk about the systems when you took over the business. Yeah. How did you decide which systems needed to be changed, developed? Let's just dive into that a little bit. So one thing I realized pretty early was we were spending a lot of time going out and doing new quotes. Mm -hmm. So every week, a year ago, we would go out and do 20, 30 quotes, just going out to potential customers' houses. And no one's paying you for that? No one's paying us for that. Just going out there, counting up the window panes, uh, looking at the job, seeing, you know, if, yeah. And then going back home, sending it out, and then half the time they would buy from us and the other half it was just a waste of time so i realized that's a lot of time so one thing that i i did pretty early on was started looking at software called responsibid which i'm a big fan of what um, is it again responsibid and so there, there's multiple home services they're available for but what they do is they let you do online quoting so that took us a lot of time to set up correctly and make sure that we got all of the data in there. But that's the, the online quoting system that we're using right now. So uh, you identified an issue or a, a problem, right? Wasting time. Yeah. And that led you to this new software. Yeah, with Responsibid, all, all you do is you, you present it to the customer online, ask him a few simple questions. And then from that, you're able to give him a price. And so you can work the top of the funnel instead and make sure that you get as many quotes out as possible. Mm -hmm. But the, the cost for us of doing that now is the minuscule compared to in the past. Right. Martin, whenever you travel for work, do you ever use Starbucks Wi-Fi or other public internet? Yeah. Uh, how often do you think about getting hacked? I mean, you've got all the business information on your phone and so much more in this digital age. Yeah, probably not as often as I should. Well, the damage that cyber criminals can inflict if they were to gain access to you is unimaginable. And NordVPN can prevent that. For the price of a cup of coffee per month, NordVPN will give you next level security. And their new feature, Threat Protection, would block malware, avoid malicious ads, and stop tracking by intrusive pesky ad companies 24 seven. This is all in addition to their easy to use VPN service. With a quick tap, NordVPN will change your location and address while also encrypting your online traffic, giving you guys a truly private and secure online experience. Now, the best part is when you sign up, you get all of these features and more on up to six approved major devices. NordVPN is offering you guys an additional one month free when you sign up for their two year plan. So visit the link below to get this exclusive NordVPN deal. It is risk free and comes with their 30 day money back guarantee. Describe to me your perfect customer experience that you try to offer to all your customers, of course. Okay, so they uh, heard from us via referral. They go on our website, they learn about the company and the services we offer, and then they self-quote using the, the software I talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. And then, depending on what, where they land, uh, if it's uh, as something a simple job, that might move them right onto the scheduling stage. If it's more complicated, they're gonna get a call from our awesome office manager, who's then gonna follow up with them, ask some follow-up questions, and then give them a price. And then once they get a quote, if they they don't close on it right there and then. Again, the office manager is gonna follow up with a phone call within uh, a few days just mm -hmm. to make sure. Uh, they're gonna give you follow up emails, etc. Uh, and then if they decline, that's the end of it. But if they uh, do accept, you go on to schedule and then they uh, there's a whole communication around that. And then we show up on time, we do the job, they're very happy. And then afterwards they're, uh, yeah, ask for a review. And then they give that, us one. That's the thumbs up customer yes. experience. Yeah. What did you do first when you acquired the business? Because part of what I want to extract from you is the rebranding, the changing things, really growing revenue, but almost double yeah. than when you got it. So let's talk about that and the value in it. So that's a lot of small things. First, I focus on learning and not mm -hmm. making too many changes in the beginning. I see. Uh, small incremental things. Because I didn't have a background in the industry, I wanted to learn and make sure that the changes I made actually made sense. One thing we did was we hired a full-time office manager, somebody to pick up the phone for us who can sit there, answer, communicate with the customers and, and be that touch point on a day-to-day -day basis with mm -hmm. the customers and make sure that we have good communication before and during and after an appointment, which in the past, there was nobody to, to, to really man the phone on a day-to-day -day basis like that. Okay, what else? So one big change that we also did was, of course, the, the, the rebranding, like getting our logo on everything as Beautiful. best we could. 
Uh, massive blue whale. <laughs> massive, friendly, big, friendly <laughs> blue whale. <laughs> Does that have anything to do with you being from Norway? No, nothing at all. <laughs> no. I mean, we're in Seattle, so, you know, it's uh, love people love with... whales here. I yeah. came here, started subscribing to the Seattle Times, and I realized how much people love whales. Really? I didn't know yeah, that. Okay. So we, we went to, with the whale logo. Um, <laughs> yeah. doesn't really matter, right? Because it does doesn't stand matter. out. doesn't matter. That's the thing. So here's what matters in window cleaning. You show up on time, you do an okay job, you take your shoes off, you're so Somebody that's perceived as trustworthy because they let us into their bedroom to clean their windows. They need to be able to trust that this person is somebody that I, I'm willing to, you know, do the, let do this work for me. And so the uniforms and the logo and all that is part of that process, like giving us the trust factor. You're a nice guy. I'd let you into my bedroom to clean the windows. <laughs> I, try to. I think that's Thank important you. too, right? I mean, it is super important. It is. What else came with the business? So, you know, over a 400K, what came with that? Can you give us a breakdown of what was, what was that including? The, the van, the stuff, or just the business and the clients? No, everything you're looking at now, I bought over the last year. Uh, it came with three trucks, two really old ones, three employees. And most importantly, the reason I was buying it was that it had over 4,000 names in the database. Right. Which were houses that have been previously quoted, emails to those customers, pricing, everything, etc. I bought a phone number that keeps ringing you basically bought that spreadsheet of mm. clients that are already loyal and yeah they had a CRM a customer management relationship management system so in that was a profile on each of the customers with their you know phone numbers addresses uh, what work we've done for them previously mm -hmm. and what prices we charged quotes etc when you're going through the slowest time of the year for your business in your industry, what do you do in that moment to continue either generating more customers, bringing in more revenue, or are you just sitting idle? So last year, I spent a lot of money on marketing, trying to generate revenue in that slow period. And I realized that I was paying a lot for uh, what I felt was, yeah, we didn't get a good ROI in, in September in that slow period. So you just got to be very open with the employees from the date of hire that there's going to be a and downs here. Sometimes we work 50 hours mm. a week, that's right now. And then in the, the fall, it's going to be more like 30. And so do you let, you don't let them go necessarily, you just reduce the hours that they're able to work, right? Yeah, or you go on vacation, or it's a four hour, four day week, or they work six hours, you know, you talk to each one of them and just, yeah. Do you spend more on advertising during the slowest? Or are you saying you've done that and the, the, the ROI was pretty poor? It was pretty poor. So this, this is something when you can't sell Christmas lights in February, right? And it's the same thing a lot of these older services. People don't want window cleaning necessarily when you're just pouring rain outside. Right. And they also don't need their gutters clean until the leaves come off. They're, they're smart enough to know that. And so you just have to lean into it when there's demand and just spend your marketing dollars when the customer is the ready there. to buy and you're going to get a much better ROI. So your advice clearly would be don't overspend on marketing during the slowest because it may not do anything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a good tip for you guys. All right, blitz time with Martin. Martin, okay. we'll fly through these questions. Who is your biggest inspiration and why? Oh, that is a handful of different people who have done what I've done before. Buy small businesses, grow them really fast, and live a happy life. They inspire you, okay. What kind of car do you drive? Uh, I drive the white Silverado pickup truck right there. That's your work truck? Yeah. But a, that's also your non-work truck? Well, I don't drive anywhere outside of work <laughs> right now. <laughs> We've got a Jeep Grand Cherokee, I guess, okay. for the family. If you won the lottery for like 100 million, what would you do with it? I'd buy a bunch of small businesses. Well, very smart investment. What's the most important piece of advice you have been told? Oh, make your bed in the morning. I like that. Yeah. Plain and simple. What do you spend per month on average for advertising? About three thousand dollars. Three grand. What what platform's giving you the best return? Uh, Google. Just Google Ads? Yeah, just regular Google AdWords. Are you doing that yourself? Hired someone or pretty straight? No, over there. for now, I just own it myself. And then we also do a five round automated with the cards that go out to all the neighbors. When mm -hmm. we're at a house, the neighbors get a, a card in the mail afterwards. Got it. And it says, uh, hey, we're just cleaning the neighbors' windows. Lo love to do some work for you too. Nice. Those have also decent returns. And, and then it, I've just been experimenting with almost every conceivable platform out there. Right. You, you have to, because the times are changing. Yeah. 
You're holding something in your hand. I guess the next question I'll ask is, for somebody getting into the window cleaning business, what's the most important tool that they can start with and they can't live without? Uh, so what you can't live without is a, is a squeegee and a mop. But okay. the next thing you need to go get is a water fed extension pole. Water fed extension, extension pole. Yeah, so this Show is a long briefly extension how it pole. It extends out. What's uh, the length total? This thing is 30 feet. 30, wow. Yeah. So you can get to basically the third floor? Yeah, you can pretty easily clean the third story with this one. And then, yeah, there's a hose connects in here and sends uh, the ionized purified water in That's through the brush cool. okay. and onto the window. So there's no soap or anything. And what it allows you to do is to clean windows high up without having to use a ladder and go squeeze them like in the olden days. What is this thing worth or cost? Uh, this Any tips particular on? model, I think a full setup is going to be like a thousand, twelve hundred bucks. Wow, well, okay. So we're not talking roughly. 50 bucks or anything? No, no, it, it is an investment. And right. the other thing is you need to learn how to use it properly because if you've got bad technique, you get bad results. What's a good technique you can share with us that you've learned over time? Oh, you just got to rinse properly. The trick with this one is to not get water above the frame. Nice, interesting. So when okay. you're cleaning the window, if you get water out of the brush on, on top of the window frame, it starts running down and then it gets streaks. So okay. you just got to be very precise when you're using it. And then over time you, you learn what works and doesn't work and then check your work. Standing in front of one of your vehicles, anything else you want to highlight in terms of equipment, just for someone who's getting started? I know, you know you've got the $7,000 pressure washer, but <laughs> let's talk basics. Yeah, so what you need is a, a step stool for high inside, which okay. you have under there. And then you're gonna need a squeegee in a bucket and the water fed pole that we talked about. And right. then, because it's so seasonal, right? We have these other services we provide. So part of that is the pressure washing. So that's the pressure washer right there. We got a, a new fancier one in the back. And, and you don't have to start with a 7,000, right? You no, can, no, you this can do thing pretty much a lot. Yeah, that's off Craigslist for 900 bucks. Nice. Yeah, it's so that's deal. a really easy place to start. And then uh, getting hose reels makes it faster. So mm -hmm. one of the things about window cleaning, any kind of these home services segment that we're in, is that the average ticket price isn't that high, like 600 bucks. And so when you're trying to get to two or three houses in a day, right. being efficient, nobody's paying you to drive between locations. So you got to try and make as much money as you can as fast as possible in each location with a happy customer mm -hmm. while doing it all safely. For us, having hose reels, for instance, like these, which it speeds up things tremendously. Shave off a couple seconds here and there, everything adds up, right? Yep. This yep. is by Titan. Any, how much is this set of cost? Did you build it yourself or? Yeah, so these uh, right now, I had to wait, I think, three months before I got these. I forgot how much they were, like a thousand bucks probably for the pair. But what you're looking at here is also what we call a soft wash system. So there's water, water tanks and one with sodium hypochlorite and soap in the back there. And where we use this for roof cleaning. So in here, there's a charge uh -huh. and an electric 12 volt pump. That's it. And okay. then that lets us use soap to clean various surfaces. How do you build a reliable, successful, coherent team mm. in the cleaning business? Anything you can share or are you still learning? Still learning. So but what I'm trying to do, so we have a Slack channel, of course, where we talk every day and we share different, you know, things that happen and make sure that we, we, we all sort of feel like a group and do things together mm -hmm. and, and can ask questions and learn from each other. And when somebody's new, like we had a new guy started a couple of weeks ago and every day now he's writing with a different guy and making sure that he's introduced to all the other technicians mm -hmm. until hopefully in like three, four weeks, he'll have his own vehicle. But in the meantime, he's getting socialized by, by being with all of the other ones and learning from each and seeing how they do, do it. Do you do like getaways with the team for like morale or, or not not yet at, least at this point? Like get out to the restaurant or some kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just thinking out loud. No, no. Yeah, we do that too. We're just right now, we're just... Yeah. <laughs> this is literally the busiest we've 50, ever been. 60 hour Every weeks. I'm out here. Like I, I wasn't in the field last year that I kept it in until early. Yeah, but like right now, there's just too much work, which is why I'm out here today. Okay. Um, but uh, once it gets a little slower, like I got some big plans for August to get the whole team together and do some fun stuff. Yeah. What would you say would be a key system for any window company to have? Like you cannot operate efficiently 
without X. So you, you must have a CRM. 60% uh, of our customers are prior customers. And that was the case a year ago, it's the same case now. Like most of our customers are repeat. This is something a lot of people get done once a year at least. Mm -hmm. And so automating all that interaction around it is super efficient. So that's another thing that we built out is all the communication around. It's been a year, are you looking for a, would you be interested in us coming back? So now you gotta rinse it. Remember what I said about rinsing? Oh, is so now like you hold it back a little bit. Yeah, but yeah. not too far. And then you gotta start on top and like uh -huh. an inch out. And this is where you, just, you build your core muscles. So oh, you see, if, I, oh, I don't have quite a six pack yet, but if I was doing this all summer, <laughs> like waving this wand back and forth like this, and make sure you run all of the dirty water off the window pane. So when you bought the business, you changed the logo, you rebranded it. Yeah. How did you deal with brand awareness at that point? What did you do? What tips, tricks can you share with us? So this, where we started was that it didn't have much of a brand. The guy who sold it to me, he had four I different see. websites and four different names. Four? Yeah. He was running, yeah, different, different parts of town. So old school mm -hmm. search engine optimization have a name that's associated with Seattle window cleaners. So it used to be West Seattle window cleaners. And that mm -hmm. was where 70% of the customers were. And uh, also that was the one page that ranked a lot on Google. The old trucks, they didn't have any logo on them. The guys would just go out and pretend to be from one of these four different websites, depending on which house they went to. It's just super confusing. So no brand to start with in the first place. It wasn't place. much of a brand, yeah. but it had, you know, that repeat customer base and there was some relationship there. And I have noticed that after we, we just simplified and made it all Seattle window cleaners, we have lost some customers outside of that core area. It, and I've lost a little bit of business in say Bellevue, for instance, because of that name change. But what I did was I feel necessary because it, it just makes everything cleaner, simpler. Plus I wanted to grow. And so my starting point was West Seattle Linen Cleaner. And I wanted to grow all over the city. So that's mm -hmm. why we so shorten it to just Seattle. I've been very surprised. It has been very frictionless, surprisingly frictionless, I'd say, to do the whole rebranding thing. Again, I want to follow up on the changes you've done in the company that have helped you grow so much. And is there like one thing that you do and boom, everything changes all of a sudden? What can you elaborate on? No, so what I've learned from looking at the data and, and seeing what's different now than from a year ago, it's what I realized is there's a, just a lot of accumulated little changes. So we've updated our quoting system to make it faster, more efficient to give quotes to customers instead mm -hmm. of going out to their houses. We've uh, been able to increase our uh, average ticket quite substantially by uh, offering in part by offering packages and making sure that when we go out to a house we, we do more than one service if we can so we go there right. to clean the windows and we also clean the gutters and that I makes hate. us more profitable and part of that is making them aware of that we offer these services because part of what we learned from talking to the existing customer base was often they didn't know that we had this whole range of services that we provided You've been doing an incredible job growing revenue since you've acquired the company. Where do you see yourself in terms of building and scaling for the next five years? So I think this business can at least double, maybe go three times what it is today. And then my goal in like five years is to, to be in a place where I probably have a little portfolio of businesses similar to this in the home services space. So I think there's a natural sort of plateau for this probably, and then do something else adjacent to it. Where's the plateau revenue-wise, just gross per year, you think, for this company alone? A million and a half, two. Okay. Why buy versus starting something from scratch for those watching and want to get into the same industry? So if you buy something, the advantages are that you're starting way up the curve, right? Yep. If I was going to start this from scratch, the guy who sold it to me, he talked about working long nights in November, sick as a dog, on a roof in the rain. And yeah, sounds, that sounds fun. To trying to pay rent. And that's the honest truth often if you start something from scratch and I wanted to bypass that step. So you didn't want to spend the nights on the roof in the rain. You're like, I need to find something that has the wheel spinning per se already. Yeah. And so the thesis behind what I was doing is that there's a bunch of small businesses um, for sale in that segment I was looking for, but mm -hmm. not in that. I, they're good, sustainable businesses. It's just that there's not a lot of buyers from them for them. Talking about technology, what else do you want to highlight to our viewers um, that is part of your business? Maybe give us a quick overview, like 
all the tech tools that you use and what they do for the business? Yeah, so the core, the key, the center of it is our CRM. We're using something called the customer factor, which is where all the old jobs are. That's where we see our calendar, where we're going to be that day, what the jobs we're going to do, etc. So that's the core piece. And then for the sales side of it, it's responsibility, right? Right. With the quoting and our follow-ups and communication with the customer is all now through responsibility. What else? Well, after the job is done, we also use nice job. They do uh, send out follow-ups afterwards mm. to the customer and asks for reviews. So when I bought the business, it had been around for 12 years and it had 11 reviews on Google. That's disappointing. <laughs> Where are you at today? Uh, so we're at 119, I believe. Wow. It's only been 16 months, as you said, right? Yes. That's um, incredible. And that's all through this system that you... Yeah, just by asking for it. So that's the thing, like same with referrals. You don't get them unless you ask for them. And so we just, we had a very passionate customer. We had a bunch of customers that have been around for 10 years and then it, nobody asked them for a review. Do you incentivize somehow to get reviews? No, just ask. Just ask? Yeah. The most important question that people love is what are the overall profit margins that you're shooting for and where, where are they today? Yeah, uh, so I'm hoping long term they are going to be in the 20, 25% range. The owner, sort of when all the expenses paid when we're stabilized. Got it. So I got a very clear idea about where I want to take this business. And so right now I'm basically taking uh, all the cash flow, just plowing it back in and trying to grow as fast as possible. When stabilized though, the 20 to 25, yeah. is that pretty average for the industry you'd say? Uh, I believe so, yeah, it should be. Because you do have some, a lot of this is just variable expenses, salaries, right. etc. So that's roughly a third, 35, 40% is going to be your technicians. And then there's another roughly 30% in overhead and insurance and uh, yeah, just all the Debt service, whatever have. else. Yeah. That, yeah, that's all in there too. And then, um, that's, yeah. The, the profit margins, whenever we ask on this channel, we always want to know like, what's your take home profit margin, right? Ah, right. So if you're saying that's going to be 20 to 25%, that's, yeah, that's, Pretty good. So if somebody wants to buy an existing business, mm. what would you suggest they do today? What resources to go to? Where do they find that? So the website where businesses are listed for sale is bizbuysell.com. That's the easiest thing you can do. That's mm -hmm. brokered deals that are on the internet available for everybody to go look at and sort, look at your geography, find deals, companies that's appealing to you. Got it. The other approach is to network and, and know of somebody who's willing to, to sell the business to you. Okay, well, upflip.com is very similar to Biz Buy Sell. We're gonna be featuring a lot more businesses there, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Yeah. How do you maintain consistent quality, Martin? Mm -hmm. When you have eight employees, 10, one can slack or not do a good job there. Do you have some kind of checklist, some kind of a protocol that everyone absolutely has to follow? Uh, no, I no. just try and train them well, make very clear what the expectations are for what a, a good job is. And then all our customers are asked for a review whether or not they did a good job. My office manager, our office manager also calls every customer the day after and ask if they were happy with the service, how things went, mm -hmm. etc. So we do gather that feedback from each of them. And so every employee is, is actually the quality control person essentially, right? You yeah, don't... and then we do go out and do touch-ups and I measure that and I report back every employee gets feedback on how fast they're moving. If I go out on site and I see some kind of safety violation, that's gets, that gets entered in. And then they also get feedback on how many reviews they have um, and just the overall comments from the customers. Every time there's a touch-up, Every time you have to go mm -hmm. back to the same house right. to redo because there were streaks on the window or whatever, yeah. I write, I, we have a good long spreadsheet where I'm writing down every, every time we go back to a house. You write that for the specific employee? Yeah, it's it, just, just we so you... went back. Yeah, it all gets entered in. So Got we it. went at this date, went to this customer and we did this kind of job. And it was a second story outside window that had streaked and it was a, a sunny day on a Friday or whatever. Right, right. So, and this is the employee that was on there. And here's why I think there was a streak. Mm. And then here is why 
I could avoid it. You gotta ask the questions, like the dig into it. And mm -hmm. right now, I'm still, this is something I started doing this spring. So yeah. right now we got like 20, 30 entries in that spreadsheet. But I imagine at the end of the year, when I have a lot of data, mm -hmm. I'm able to see where the issues are so we can improve our training. It's not the individual technician right, necessarily right. that's trying to do bad or good job. Like we've set him up for failure to some extent. If It's all if, about quality control. As exactly. Uh, but you got to gather the data and then analyze it. And then you can look at, okay, is it process, is it equipment, is it customer yeah. communication? Like what's, where, where is, how can we improve? Since we started this, I like it because you're all about data. I think that's one important aspect is like you track everything yeah. in order to then improve certain steps and processes uh, of a company. You guys, if you enjoying this, we would appreciate your quick like. Thank you for watching. Let's keep going. What would be your one piece of advice for somebody who's starting a window cleaning company in terms of offering a second type of service? What would that be? So it should be something that's uh, counter cyclical to your window cleaning. So mm -hmm. when window cleaning is super busy in the summer, you need to get something to that takes you through that quiet month, uh, the quiet periods, and then you can sell to the same customer base. What would that be? Pressure washing? Yeah, second, no or? pressure washing coincides with, with the window cleaning as a spring activity. So for us, it's the gutter and roof cleaning. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what, and the Christmas lights. What are the profit margins on gutter and roof cleaning versus windows? They're good. They're actually better. Like but, uh, in the 40s, 50s? Yeah, yeah. If you but just focus in on If you just focus on that, because sometimes you don't, gutter cleaning is pretty, you know, you don't know what you're going to get when you get there. So you got to price them assuming they're full. Mm -hmm. And then when you get out there, it often turns out they weren't. <laughs> you look inside, there's just this is like, one okay, this is going to take me five minutes. And, and then some, it depends. Like yeah. we try and build long term relationships with our customers. So I'm not going to you know, overcharge somebody for a service they don't need. But at right. the same time, if we took the time to go there, you know, put up the ladder, go up and check, you're gonna pay us something. What's been the number one factor for your revenue growth, you would say? Picking up the phone. And, That's uh, it. Yeah, answering the phone. Yes, uh, that really makes a difference, especially with how busy people are right now. Being responsive, having somebody there every day like it's the so office manager it's so simple but it's, it's like simple, it, but it's that's it, the number one factor for you is what you're saying i'm, I'm that's, no that's but really i cool. think a lot of people in this space they're very busy if they're out still yeah. working in the field themselves it takes a lot to coordinate and communicate etc mm -hmm. and that's what people expect they, this is a small incremental expense for a lot of people like mm -hmm. 500 bucks for window cleaning they're not True. gonna you know think a lot about it they just want it done like when they decided they want to buy this service they go on the internet and I just want it scheduled and, and yeah. Right. So being receptive for that, like being responsive, like people expect you to. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, this has been a pleasure. I want to give you an opportunity. If you guys want to apply, you need good people, right? I so good people. You're watching yeah, this I'm video. Good people. I, yeah. I well, more. Really good employees right now. I'm really how happy can, with the guys are, I have. How can people watching right now apply for your company? So they can go on our website and then there's a link right there. So seattlewindowcleaner.com. That's uh, where you can find the, the, the contact information. If I wasn't in real estate, I would apply today because <laughs> you're a super nice guy and this has been Glad a pleasure. Nice to, Thank nice to get the chance. Yep. Thanks, Martin. Appreciate it. Well, that's a wrap with Martin, the owner of Seattle Window Cleaning. What an incredible story. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned a lot and will execute on everything that we talked about today. Take a second to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. And a huge thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video.